So what is Human and why should you care? Well, Human's going to help you primarily with three things. The first is it's going to make running scripts easier. The second is it's going to make editing and creating new scripts easier. And the third, it's going to make distributing scripts easier. So if you're a TD working on a team, if you don't already have a system set up, this might be a good way for you to hit the ground running. Okay, so running scripts easier. First thing, you know the situation where you've got a script somewhere and you want to run it. So you, you know, you have you say your source command and then their command for the procedure that you want to run. But wait, oh hold on, it's not in a script path. Okay, well I'll just go ahead and source it this way. Sourced it. Okay, now I can run my procedure. Oh, something's wrong with it. Okay, well let's go look. Oh, there's nothing there. So let's make our little procedure up and call it test and really quickly. Just have it print the word, hello. Okay, so we save that. Now we go back into Maya and we run our procedure test. Oh, it can't find the procedure because it has to source it again. Okay, well let's source it. Oh, it doesn't know where that is. So I have to go through this menu again. So you get the point. So that would be solved easily if you had, say, a script path set. Well, if there's a script path set, you know, you'd have to do not just one directory. Let's say that you have a situation where you've got this directory structure and you've got your animation, your blends, distribution, facial, all these different subdirectories I've got here. All of a sudden, let's say you get into a directory for skinning. Well, there's so many skinning tools in here that we've broken them up into, you know, a bunch of other directories. So this would mean that adding to a script path would mean adding five more things to a script path. And that's working with your Maya ENV file, which, you know, very quickly becomes a mess of soup you can't understand. You have to keep every user that you have updated with this. And because this appears in one path and you have your scripts in another and you have maybe your environment variables for other things set in another spot, you end up juggling five, six things. So the very first thing that's going to make human helpful for you is we're just going to go ahead and set up a root. Okay, for now I'm just going to grab that test directory. Boom, okay. Now, instead of having to have my source thing here and test here, I'm just going to go up to my menu and go test and open test.mel. Look at that, it said hello. That's all the script did, that's all the script needed. Now, let's say I want to do more with it. I go to the option box. Look at that. It opened up a little UI, said this is everything in this script, this is the procedure that I found in there. So I hit this button and it runs the script. That's kind of handy. That's making running scripts easier. You just add roots. If there are 20 subdirectories, it'll handle them. I'll go show you that demo directory I just pulled up a second ago. Okay, now I've added that directory. So now I've got demo here and I can see all my different scripts in here. So if I want to go into that sixth level of the skin directory, look at that. It pulled up that tool too. Look, this, this script here had a bunch more procedures going on. So that's going to make the basic work of creating and editing easier. Let's go back to our recent file of this test here. I'm going to get at my text editor this way. Boom! It just opened my script for me. It's easier to find scripts once you look for them in the menu and then open them this way instead of surfing in directories. Okay, well let's say that all of a sudden my procedure had a bunch of stuff that maybe I wanted to add to it. So I want to say add someone's name. And I want the script to say hello and then that person's name. Okay, pretty easy. Let's go back into Maya and see what happened. I'm just going to hit refresh. This just built me a UI. Now I have a field for name, so I can go ahead and type in a hey, Jason. Now test, look at that. Hello, Jason. So just like that, when I added a new argument to my procedure, I got free UI out of it. Now typing things in is fun and all, but it's nice to have other options. So let's just say I want to use PQ1. I hit string, boom, look at that. That button right there put whatever I had selected in there. Let's say I had an attribute selected. Put that in there. Now let's go back in and say I also want to send a number in. Let's call it count. Sure. I'm not going to number myself. I'm going to go hello Jason and then my number. Now I have two arguments. This slightly changed. And we're going to go back into Maya. Hit refresh. Okay. So it's got name, so let's put that in there again, and then let's say, uh, let's say the number seven, test. Hello, Jason seven. Um, again, let's say if I press with this selected, I get translate X. If I just have the cube itself selected, I get P cube. Uh, and then let's say I want to, I don't know, grab the scale attribute and hit that on the int button. Here, boom, that went to one. Let's see, I had a bigger number, like 15.7. Uh, if I select that one in here, 
I got 15. When I say that Human makes creating and editing scripts easier, you can see here that you basically not only have easier access to finding your scripts, they're in your script paths, you can get to the editor very quickly, and you can also develop back and forth in your text editor and in Maya quickly without even having to build a UI. The UI is just there. Now, you don't have to use that UI, you can build your own, but you know, in lieu of building one, you have one to develop with and work with. In certain situations, there are tools that you're just never going to bother writing a UI for anymore, and you're just going to have this thing available to you, and you're just going to hit the ground running that way. Okay, so running scripts is easier. Creating and editing scripts is easier. So now, the shortest and simplest one, somewhat obvious one, is distributing scripts is easier. If you just set a route, and you've got all the tools that you want for your team right there, you're done. You've got a distribution system. You just install this and they're good to go. They point at a directory and you're laughing. But let's say, well, you know, I've been working with another tool. I've got my directory set up and I don't really want to actually have people surf through the entire directory to find it. I'd like to have just a system where there's a menu for animators and a menu for modelers. Okay, well, let's go open the setup and I've got a directory that is set up that way. I called it my discipline folder. If I just go ahead and add that, and just for now, for ease of use, I'm going to remove these other ones. So now I've got a discipline folder, which just opens up to animator, character TD, lighting TD, and modeler. And all this is, is it has a little set of files. And each one of these files just has a list of tools that you want in that directory. So animator, character TD, lighting TD, modeler, if you look at what's inside each of these files, that's what's showing up in each of their directories. So there you go, you have that system. But let's say, well, gosh, I, I really don't want them to go into discipline before they have to find animator. That just seems like one step too many. Well, you can simply add a file called human.flat, which I usually make an empty text document. And that will just instruct the directory tool to say, okay, use this one level up. So there we go. Animator, character TD, lighting TD, modeler. So you've got a tool distribution that's going to be really easy as well. And you can hide all the files that you don't want people to see and work on, but your TDs, let's say, if you do have that other directory still set up, let's go add it again. Now, sure you've got your by discipline thing, but I've got my root here, which I can then go dig through and find the actual tool that those other you know, smaller menus are referencing, and pull them up, and see their little UI, look at their functions, see if I've got anything I can work on, and so I can work on things as a TD while other people work on them as end users in the same system. Everyone has what they need. The last two things I'm going to touch on really, really quickly are silly features, so recent files. You know, that was the last one I opened, that was the one before that, that was the one before that. Uh, I can press the regular menu item, which opens it as a tool, or I can open the option box, which opens it in that dev environment that you just saw. The other thing is search functionality. So I know that last tool was called NMBuff, it's my NMBuffer, um, but let's say I forgot exactly what it was called, so I knew buff was in the name. Look at that, here is a list of all the things that have a lot of occurrences of the string buff in them. Well, the very first one that came up is the right one. Cool, but if that was wrong, I've got all these other ones. And that will open me up the ability to open it again in that dev environment just from the search, or go ahead and take a look at the text in a script editor. So recent files, search, a couple other silly functions. So there you go. I guess the best part, really, if I'm selling you this, is it's free. It's free. Take it. Use it. Enjoy.